Hi everyone! My name's Clint Edwards, and I want to thank Sandy Durrell and everyone at Theatre Pizzazz for inviting me to come and talk with you today. I have a show of my own, it is called The Clint Edwards Show, and every week I present a 45 minute long concert of solo piano music, and I largely focus on the great music of the American musical theatre, and we talk about theatre history and composer bios, things like that, as well as pop tunes and standards, and I'd really love for you to come and check it out. Uh, right now, anybody who sends me a message and mentions Theatre Pizzazz, I will send you a link, a free link, to my latest show. So you can probably reach me down below this YouTube message in the comments section, or you can find me on patreon.com, or you can go to my regular website, which is clintedwardsmusic.com, and send me a message, mention Theatre Pizzazz, and I will get that link over to you right away. I think you're gonna love it. Uh, today, I'm really excited to share some of the music from one of my favorite musicals, and it's the show Carousel. Uh, this week is kind of a special week for Carousel. It's sort of its birthday. Uh, Carousel was premiered on April 19th, 1945 at the Majestic Theater in New York City. And uh, it is the, you know, it is a follow-up to Oklahoma. Because after Oklahoma, the big question was, what will Rodgers and Hammerstein do next? Uh, I'm sure it's probably not this similar to what Lin-Manuel Miranda faces with his follow-up to whatever that will be after Hamilton. But uh, after Oklahoma opened and it had that such a spectacular success, Rodgers and Hammerstein actually parted ways a little bit. Uh, Hammerstein went back on his own and worked on Carmen Jones, which was his uh, updating and adaptation of the opera Carmen to the American South. Uh, Richard Rodgers went back and did another project with Larry Hart. They worked on a revival of their 1927 musical, The Connecticut Yankee. And then Rodgers and Hammerstein did join up again, but not to do a stage piece. They actually wrote the film musical State Fair for Fox Movie Studios. So it kept surrounding and swirling around them. You know, what will they do next? What will they do after Oklahoma for the stage? And after much del deliberation, they decided on an adaptation of the Hungarian play Lilium. Now, the play Lilium contained a lot of difficult material, and not necessarily material you would associate with the sort of Rodgers and Hammerstein saccharine image. Uh, you know, it had spousal abuse in it, and it contained a main character that many people considered to be unlikable. But despite the challenges of that, I think it created one of their most gorgeous scores, and Richard Rodgers himself claimed that it was his favorite of all the scores he wrote, and I have to agree with him. Uh, it contains just many, many moments. The score is bursting with extraordinary songs, uh, chorus numbers, solo pieces, and dance pieces galore. And, and it actually also has some of the most groundbreaking pieces of musical theater writing in all of musical theater history. Uh, most famously is the bench scene, and this is the scene early in the show, uh, which contains the great song, If I Loved You. And the scene is about, what, 12, 15 minutes long of just a continuous flow of music and recitative, underscoring, and also full-out singing, like in the If I Loved You sections. And nothing like this had ever been accomplished in musical theater. Uh, it had many characteristics of opera, but it was written in a way that was different than opera. And the power of it, any one of you who have seen the show, I'm sure you know this, is when you watch it, it's magic. You see them fall in love with each other. It is an amazing, amazing feat of creativity uh, and, and just amazing and wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, another terrific moment in the show and one that was groundbreaking also, nothing like it, was the end of Act One, which is the great soliloquy for Billy Bigelow. And in that piece, you have that earth-shattering turn of events for Billy where he you know he thinks he's going to be this fun frolicking dad to a son and you know run around all the time and he has the realization that he might actually himself have to grow up and become the father and provider to a daughter 
and uh, it has one of those moments that I sing to my own daughter all the time because it's probably my favorite in the show which is that part that goes uh, my little girl pink and white as peaches and cream is she I, I mean only Rogers and Hammerstein could create something like that and it is amazing and powerful when you do watch it. Uh, one other note I think about the bench scene that I was mentioning earlier is Sondheim has also commented on how impactful that moment is in musical theater history. Uh, it's affected so many writers, including himself, where you look at a show like Sweeney Todd and that principle of the mixing of all the kinds of music and recitative has been extand expanded to basically contain an entire musical inside it. So just an amazing thing, the score for Carousel. And here, let's uh, say happy birthday to Carousel and we'll play a medley of numbers from the show.